Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Are you sure? Are you sure you're blessed and highly flavored? Are you anointed and appointed and ready for war? Yes. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Love worship. Love worship. In his presence is fullness of joy. Amen. And the joy of the Lord is our hallelujah. So when somebody comes weak, what do they need? More presence. Amen. More presence, more presence, more presence. Everybody loves presence. You get excited when you get a present, amen? Psalm 57. Glory to the Lamb. Are you expecting? Are you here in expectation? Psalm 57. Thank you, Master. We're going to speak this and sow it. Amen? Is everybody there? Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. For my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wing, I will make my refuge. Until these calamities have what? It's called the secret place. Does everybody understand that? It's called the secret place. He's saying all of these calamities that are going on, if you're in there, you're not going to be harmed. Doesn't mean you won't brush up to something, but you won't be harmed. The word says, he who is in us is greater than he is in the world. That doesn't mean you won't feel good, but it doesn't always mean you're sick. Just because how you feel doesn't mean you're sick. Does everybody get it? In fact, when I was asking the Holy Spirit about that to explain it a little bit more to me, he said to me, I've given you an immune system when I created you. He said, when you begin to not feel well, it's because your immune system is battling. But if you'll stand firm and not accept being sick, you won't be sick. Does everybody get it? You'll overcome it quickly. Until these calamities have passed by, I'm going to stay in the secret place. See, people are not activating their faith. When we talked about activating faith, they're not activating their faith. They're more relying on how they feel. And then they're believing everything that the world tells them. Verse 2. I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and what? Save me. <laughs> he reproaches the one who what? Would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Come on, speak it. My soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be above all the earth. Then they have prepared, they have prepared a what? Net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it they themselves have what? Fallen. My heart is steadfast. Say that again. My heart is steadfast. Say it again. My heart is steadfast, O oh God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. Awake, my glory. Awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O oh Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. For your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be above all the earth. Wow. That was a battle. He was exalting the Lord. He said, man, I look at I know I sent all, all, these, all these enemies have tried to trap me. 
I know all these emotions have been attacking me. But I'm going to stay in this secret place. I'm going to praise you no matter how I feel, no matter what's going on. I'm going to give you the glory no matter what's happening in my life. All tragedies, anything that happens, sufferings, whatever it is. I'm going to give you the glory. Why? What was he actually doing in this psalm? Think about this. What was he doing? He was refreshing his identity. Does everybody understand that? He was doing what? Refreshing his identity in him. Man, we need to refresh our identity. The same thing we need to do is con constantly activate our faith. Listen, if you're not refreshing your identity, you're not going to activate faith. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Oh, happy days. Without refreshing of your identity and activating of your faith, you are not, you can't be divinely used. Does everybody got it? You can't be divinely used. Because heaven moves on those things. Does everybody understand that? Without refreshing your identity and activating faith, you cannot be divinely used. How many of y'all want to be divinely used? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1. I better get there, I guess. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as what? No, I'm in 2 Corinthians. Sorry. I'm in 1 Corinthians. I'm supposed to be in 2 Corinthians. Do we begin again to what? Condemn ourselves? Or do we need as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Verse 2. You are what? Our epistle. Written in our hearts, known and read by who? All men. You're being read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of who? Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. I want you to look at this. Come on, good at visualization. The Spirit of God is writing His words in you. In you. You are a walking, living, life-giving epistle by the breath of Creator. By the what? Breath of the Creator. The creator that created all things through his breath is in you. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, the breath of God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart. For we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Who also made us sufficient as what? Ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the what? Spirit. In other words, the breath of the creator. Everyone say breath of the creator. who made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but the breath of the creator. For the letter kills, but the breath gives life. Wow. <laughs> Verse 17. Now the Lord is the breath, the spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. So one of the things that you have to look at is Jesus was the breath of God in a physical form. He was not only, and his body was made of the Word, but he was still the breath of God. That's why he was the Spirit of God. The breath of God came into the realm and clothed himself with flesh. We are epistles of the words of, the of Christ 
and ministers of the spirit of life. And where the spirit is, there's freedom. There's what? Freedom or liberty. Let me share something with you which really grieved my spirit. I heard the Holy Spirit say, so many have taken my death in vain. It tore me up. Every drop of blood, every price that he paid, I said it, they've, it's been in vain to so many people. They trample my covenant, my blood. They disregard and lose sight and disrespect the price that I paid for humanity. And they call themselves Christians, but yet they've taken everything that I've done in vain. It grieved me terribly. I began to repent. In other words, and then he showed me his blood in his stripes, his blood in his stripes, his blood in his stripes. And he said, they've taken this in vain. They've not fought for it. They've taken everything else, accepted it, but they've rejected the fullness of what I paid the price. See, when you reject the fullness of what Christ paid, it's in vain. Even that song that we sing, Lord, let me not take your grace in vain. That's his plan of escape. In vain. See, the process of this 90-day event of bringing us through is so that we get serious. So that we get serious. 2 Timothy 2. of the words of God Almighty, and we are ministers of the breath of the Creator. Second Timothy chapter 2. Lord, we repent for taking your price in vain. In verse 20, we've heard this multiple times. Everybody there? 2 Timothy 2.20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and for some, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from his past, he will be a vessel of honor. A vessel of honor. This is a spiritual order he's bringing us into. He will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work, and divinely used. He says something. He says, listen, you're going to have to flee from also your youthful lust, things that you've lived with, these desires that are offensive. But pursue what? Pursue what? Righteousness, faith, love. He's given us a, 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 an, an order here. Righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. Pure heart. In other words, associate with individuals to that degree. Don't associate with individuals that are not out doing this. They may call themselves your friends, but it, really they're your enemies. He says, avoid foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. Listen, he's, saying, he's given us all of this information. He's saying, if you want to be divinely used, these are things that I want in order. And I want you to avoid. And avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, argue, but be gentle to all, able to teach, and be patient. In other words, endure. In all in humility, humbleness, according to those who are in opposition. 
if God will perhaps what? Grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. It's the spiritual order of the, of, of the divinely used. Cleanse from your past sanctification, which is separation from worldly influence. Lustful desires. In other words, he says, pursue, seek. What does the word say? Seek ye the kingdom of God and, all thing, and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto us. Amen? Anything that is not righteous is unclean. Amen? Does everybody get it? And this is where you've got to discern what is clean and unclean. Associations of faithful, faithful, those are people who are activated faith out of a pure heart. <laughs> those that can guard their mouth and avoid temptation of the flesh, rejecting pride at every turn. He said, these are the people I want you to associate with. And Isaiah 61 The process of being divinely used. Glory. This is how it starts. Verse 1, let's speak it and decree it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. The Lord what? Has anointed me. You will see that in the Word of God, it starts with the breath of God, the Spirit of God, and it goes all the way up to what? The anointing. So it's the Spirit of truth to the anointing. Now it's more than just the Spirit of truth. It's the presence of God and the power of God, the anointing. You'll see there's that progress and that process to it. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who what? Mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of what? Righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he may be glorified. It starts with the breath of creation or creator. Living and abiding in us. And we in him. It is the breath of the creator. Does everybody get it? John 14. Is everybody okay? You know, people want to be divinely used. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can go out and you can feed the poor and do all kinds of other stuff. But one of the things we want to be able to do is activate individuals' faith. But they're not going to be, it's not going to activate if your faith's not activated. Amen. And if your identity is not refreshed, because they'll see through you and see what's in you. You hear many people, well, you got it. That person's got a character of Christ. Well, that person carries a, a presence of peace. There's a, 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 an area to what, what we carry. We carry the presence of God. We carry the love of Christ. We carry the power. But we've got to be refreshed in the identity and activated faith all the time. All the time. Why? Because we want to be divinely used. Remember, the breath of the Creator is living in me and you. So there's got to be some kind of relationship with the breath of the Creator in you. Amen? It's an inward relationship with an outward expression. 
Verse 16. Jesus said to them, John 14, 16, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another what? Helper. Man, do we need help on this side. Amen? That he may abide with you, one, forever. Thank God he doesn't move in how he feels. We'd really be in trouble. <laughs> Why? Because he's seeing how you feel. Verse 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot what? Receive. Does everybody get that? The world cannot receive the breath of the creator. They can't until they come to Christ and repent. Then it's available to them. Amen. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it has neither seen him nor known him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. The spirit of truth, the world will never receive until repentance to Christ dwells in me and you. He dwells in us and then comes over us. John 15. Verse 26. So we see here he's called the helper, the spirit of truth. Verse 12. He said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. In other words, they couldn't interpret them. They couldn't understand it. However, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will be able to interpret for you. Has come. He will guide you into what? All truth. Now, I want you to know that if everybody was being led by the Spirit of God, they would not be voting and promoting the things that are against God. Amen? Does everybody understand that? They wouldn't promote abortion. They wouldn't promote perversion. They wouldn't promote lies. They wouldn't promote violence and all the other stuff that's going on, if they're led by the spirit of truth. Truth. They would know that who you serve when you die is where you go. They would know that. Is everybody okay? However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to what? Tell you things to come. He will glorify me. Verse 14. For he will take of what is mine and do what? Declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Now that is powerful. That's by the Spirit of God. The breath of the creator, the creator's breath. So he says here, he says, listen, I'm going to guide you into all truth. I'm going to tell you things to come. This is going to bring glory to Jesus by expressing himself through us in obedience, endurance, suffering, and submission. What are we submitting to? The law of the spirit. Somebody got it? And what is the law of the spirit? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. I'm going to say it again. He's going, to ex he's going to glorify Jesus and express himself through obedience in me and you, through our endurance. Obedience, endurance, sufferings, and submission to the law of the Spirit. As a joint heir of Christ, we have access to everything that pertains to a godly life in Christ. He says, and whatever I have, I will declare to you. Does everybody get it? I mean, come on, man. We shouldn't lack anything. One of the reasons why people lack is because the devil steals. 
because they're so easily swayed out of position. So the devil comes to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. Amen. Go to John 16. Hallelujah. I mean, John, uh, we went to John 16. Go to Romans 9, sorry. <laughs> Romans 9, divinely used. Let me share something with you. There's a divine use and a devil abuse. There's a lot of people proclaiming that they're suffering for Jesus. That's devil abuse. That ain't Jesus. Amen? Amen? That's not Jesus. Divinely used is different. It's not a burden. Does everybody get it? It's not a burden. It's a joy. In verse 1, let's speak it. I tell the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. Now, this is powerful. He says, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. In other words, your conscience is a tool God gets to speak to you. And that's where he talked about those who have a seared conscience because they can't receive the correction of God. Or his voice is shut out. A seared conscience can't receive correction or the true voice of God. Remember, your conscience is a, is a communication tool that God uses to us. In the Spirit. Amen? Ephesians 1. Hallelujah. Shubaraba kifiri bikiro boko so. Shumama shata kasa shanta kasia. Baraba kifiri bikiro boko so. Ephesians 1. In verse 13. Let's speak it together. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is a what? The guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Let me explain something about redemption. You know, people sometimes claim redemption in an area Redemption isn't fulfilled without obedience. Redemption is not fulfilled without obedience. It's obedience unto redemption. Obedience unto redemption. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay on that? <laughs> Glory. Sealed by the promise of the Holy Spirit, we are an inheritance to redemption. But again, redemption is fulfilled through obedience, not disobedience. 2 Corinthians 5. Divinely used. Verse 16. Everybody there? Let's speak it. 
Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Well, what's according to the flesh? Well, we know the works of the flesh. Amen. How about human precepts, humans' traditions? How about the things according to human life, according to the carnal way of living? And in the area where it says we, re, we don't regard them anymore, and, and it doesn't mean that we, uh, I don't want to make this sound crude. It's not that we don't respect them, but we don't accept them as for what they have to say. Does everybody understand that? Because we show respect to everyone. I mean, there's people that say all kinds of stuff. You just, yeah, okay, no problem. No. And you walk away going, you're right. He's a human. Human precepts, human understanding, carnal ways, fleshly. I'm not going to receive anything they got to say. I'm not going to receive what the doctors have to say. I'm not going to receive what the world, the economy has. I can't receive anything that the world has to say. Because behind the world say is a lie. It's under the father of all lies. And people are so sucked up into it. It's incredible to me. So sucked up into it. All churches, many churches are closed. Why? Because they've accepted human counsel. Instead of rejecting it. Hallelujah. It doesn't make us any better. Amen. It's not about being better or worse or whatever. It means whether your identity is refreshed or you're activating faith or not. You know, I remember when Paul and I think it was Silas, whoever, they went to jail. And what, were the, what was their whole testimony? They're saying, listen, we know you told us we couldn't do these things. <laughs> but we're under a higher authority than you. And we are under a higher authority than this world. Amen? You know, personally, I'm kind of like sick and tired of it. Personally. I'm tired of all of this foolishness. It's time to start kicking butt and kicking doors in where the enemy dwells. It's time to really step up and get angry and become angry with the voice of the enemy and what's going on in this world. People are getting sick and tired. It's according to the worldly precepts. I'm sick and tired of them getting sick and tired. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Let's go a little further. Is everybody there? Verse 17. Oh, let's do 16 again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him thus no longer according to the flesh. <coughs> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone's in the anointing, <coughs> if anyone is dwelling in the presence, the power, and the truth of God Almighty, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now we then, we are what? We're what? Ambassadors. We are not only epistles, but we are ambassadors. We're not only the living, written Word of God Almighty, but we are the breath of the Creator that dwells within us. And we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God in the fullness of the anointing. For he who made, uh, made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He says, don't regard human precepts, doctrines, traditions. Refreshing and renewing our identity in Christ. In the anointing. And ask Christ. Everyone said, I, I am Christ. 
The Lord tells us Christ. We are carriers of Christ. We are called Christ. What's Christ? It's an anointed one. We're the offsprings of the anointing. That doesn't mean that we are the Christ. We are Christ. Amen? Because we're the anointed ones. And he said, in the anointing as ambassadors to activate others' faith, and desire that want so that they can become a, into a place of desire to be the righteousness of God. That's divinely being used. Philippians 3. Philip 3. Glory in the highest. Come on, Philip. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah. Philippians three, verse seventeen. <clears throat> Brethren, <laughs> Brethren, is everybody there? Join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you, even weeping. That they are enemies of the cross of Christ. In other words, taking the price in vain. Amen. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. Whose glory is their shame. Who set their mind or their hearts on earthly things and human precepts and traditions. For our citizenship is in heaven. Would you please say that with me? Our citizenship is in heaven. Do you understand that? You have a dual citizenship, but this isn't your true citizenship. You have given this citizenship up for an eternal citizenship. Our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Our citizenship is now in heaven, connecting with the faith of heaven. Amen? Listen. You know, when the Spirit gives you when you cross over, you're no longer connected here. When you cross over, you realize the reality of the importance of your identity. See, you can't even cross over. You need an ID. <laughs> and your identity is your ID. So you need to refresh your identity and act your faith before you can even cross in. It's like getting into a special club, you know. <laughs> You got to have a special ID to get in. It's a security system, you know. And so when you get in there, though, then you realize that this world has nothing to offer. It's got nothing to offer. In fact, people waste time in the side. They waste time just wasting it away. Doing pleasurable things all the time. Remember, your idols are the things that you enjoy the most. Amen? <laughs> and, and in that, in other words, not a heart seeking what God might say about something or somewhere or whatever. Not about some person. My heart is always looking for a message. I want a message from the Lord from direction. I want a message from the Lord. I want to know what he's telling me. I want to know that I'm pleasing him. Amen. I want to know whether I'm doing the right thing or not, not the right thing. 
I want to know. Why? Because my heart is set in the area to where I want to please him. And every Christian should have a heart set to please him. And you can't do that if you're first. It's impossible. If you're first, it ain't going to work. And you can't be divinely used because you can't give what you don't have. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 and verse 20. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. But you have a what? <clears throat> An anointing. Remember, we've gone from spirit of truth to what? Anointing. Now, in the anointing is the what? Power, presence, and truth. So there's, he's brought us further into the spirit, further into the breath of the creator, where now we're walking in the power, the presence, and the truth. That's the anointing. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against the anointing. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know what? You know what? It didn't say you don't know nothing. It says you know all things. The whole thing is, is whether you're connecting to him inside to know all things. He tells you all things to come, so does he warn you? Amen. He tells you don't touch this or touch that. That's okay, that's not okay. That's clean, that's unclean. That's pure, that's unpure. That's holy, that's ho unholy. That's righteous, that's unrighteous. That's lawful, that's not lawful. That's acceptable, that's not acceptable. He tells you these things right in here before you even make the decision. If we're connected, truly connected, you'll know everything. Boom, boom, boom. Should I go here? No, go here, go here, go here. But you know all things in the anointing. Verse 21. I've not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one, the Christ, the power that came from heaven for me and you. He is antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son is the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he's promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who what? Try to deceive you. Try to deceive you. In other words... Block, receive, uh, mislead, worldly and human precepts. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in the anointing, in him. Again, it is the spirit of truth to the anointing. The spirit of truth to the anointing now. The spirit of truth to the anointing. The anointing is the presence and power. So it's more than just the spirit of truth. Amen? We have the spirit of truth and the presence and power now, which is the breath of the Creator. Warning about the Antichrist world of evil presence that will attempt to nullify or compromise your identity in Christ. Not able to receive the promises of God because of uncompleted requests and commands from God. You know, when God tells us to do something, we don't finish it, he can't release the promise. There are people who are going to have a desire to want to serve God, and God can never use them. Why? Because they've never completed what they, he told them to do. 
Does everybody get it? They didn't complete it. Well, when he sends you for a training, you need to complete it. Or you don't learn it. Then he's got he's to go a whole other different route to bring you through a whole process. And it takes a lot longer to go through than what he originally told you to do. Amen? In other words, the promise is released after the obedience is completed. Obedience, then redemption. 1 Corinthians 4. But people are so deceived, bound by religion and traditions of humanity instead of godliness and by the spirit of truth and the anointing. 1 Corinthians 4. Is everybody there? In verse 1, let's speak it. Let a man so consider us as servants to the anointing of Christ. And stewards of the mysteries of God. Whoa. More of it is required in a steward that one be found what? Faithful. Faith, that means faith activated. But with me is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or any human court. Oh, I love it. Paul says, listen, man. You humanites ain't going to judge me. You can take me to all your courts and whatever and all your rules and all your regulations. 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 But I'm not a citizen of this world. I'm a citizen from another world. You can do whatever you want to me. It doesn't matter. I'm not judged by you or you or you or you. I'm judged by him. I'm judged by the one that created me, the breath of the creator who judges me. He said, in fact, I don't even judge myself. <laughs> he examines himself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I'm not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. And who is the Lord? The Spirit. And who is the Spirit? The breath of the Creator. <laughs> Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from him personally. <laughs> James 5. Servants to the anointing and stewards of the hidden revelations of the Father, faithful, fully activated. James chapter 5. Divinely used. Glory. Is everybody there? Verse 13. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Is any among you suffering? Let him what? Didn't say go to the phone. If anyone's suffering, let him what? Go seek the kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. Let him pray. <clears throat> if anyone cheerful, let him sing what? Psalms. If any among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church, and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. It will what? Save the sick. In other words, you ain't going to die. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be what? Forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. Whoa, snap. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous person avails what? Much. Much. <laughs> Anointing the sick for healing. Mark 16. 
Mark 16. Divinely used. Is everybody there? Verse 16. We're going to confess this. Today everybody's going to get anointed. But you've got to be able to receive. You must activate your faith. Anything that's ailing you? Any labels that have been placed upon you? I want you to write them down. And lay them before your feet. And we're going to touch and agree that everything that you have written down that's laid before your feet will loose you and leave you and go to the pit and never return again. Everybody understand? Activate your faith today in the fullness and the anointing of Christ Jesus because you're angry enough now and sick and tired of being attacked the way you've been attacked and the world is being attacked. We must be a sign and wonder to the world. Amen? Verse 16. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. That means you better be a follower and a, a submissive obedient. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will what? Cast out demons. You think you have a demon? Write it down. They will speak with new tongues. And that doesn't mean you're going to go to college and learn another language. It's called the Holy Spirit language. And they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly or by no means hurt them, they will lay hands on the sick and they will what? Recover. It's that simple. Amen? They will lay hands on the sick and they will, will recover. Divinely used. How many of y'all want to be divinely used? We need to be completely free. Amen? So first I'm going to pray for everybody that's watching. Amen? And then we're going to pray. I want you to put your hearts in acceptance, and we're going to anoint everyone in here and pray and loose you from these infirmities in the name of Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone that's watching today, I pray the anointing of Christ to break every yoke of bondage. Does everybody touch and agree with me in this place? We ask, Holy Spirit, that you will invade their lives Drive out all sickness, disease, infirmity. Break every label that's been placed upon them. Send every demonic spirit and every spirit of addiction and fear and plague and pestilence and infirmity to the pit in the name of Jesus, releasing your stripes of healing to heal every single one, raising them up and filling them with your Holy Spirit with power and that the anointing of Christ Jesus would rest upon them, that they may be assigned and wonder for your glory and be sealed by the Spirit of God and be sent by the Spirit of God with the anointing in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Play touch.